Hello everyone and welcome back in. Well, we have a new project on the bench and yes, it's going to be the M3 Stewart. Lovely little little light tank from the US Army. And by the time we get done with this episode, well, as you can tell, we have a lot to do. We'll, we'll have completed the kit and added a lot of shiny stuff to it. So let's get moving. Well, here we go. We're gonna start this with the base kit of the Tamiya M3 Stewart. It's a great little kit. It's one of those kits that's obviously just a weekend build, but of course I'm gonna complicate it just a little bit with some photo etch from Voyager. And I think I might try to use these rubber band tracks. Um, we'll see how that goes. I could always order something in if these aren't gonna work out. Get to the bottom of the box here. We've got that, oh, that very comforting and familiar Tamiya green plastic. That's always nice to take a look at. And then we have the Nemesis, <laughs> yes, our photo etch. And this is, like I said, coming from Voyager. And let's pop this open and let's see what we got in here. Well, a lot of shiny bling, which is great. And then, oh, look at all these instructions. Uh, yeah. Generally, this is the case. There's going to be a lot to take care of here. So we have a couple of different sets of instructions on the workbench. The original kit instructions from Tamiya. And then you try to reference the Voyager upgrade areas and... You can pick and choose which places you want to add photo etch or not to add photo etch. So we'll just see what happens as I move along with this project. So, like I said, a lot to do. Well, this is going to be one of those sort of marathon type of a project. So there's a lot to do here. It's going to take a while. And I think we should do a little stretching at the very beginning. So let's do a little warm up here. We'll add a little bit of cast texture to some of these parts. A little added cast texture, I should say. Using Mr. Surfacer 500, just kind of stippling that onto the surface. Just a little rougher texture. And we've got some of these road wheels. Well, we might as well ding those up a little bit. Just cut some little nicks and scrapes on some of those just to make them look a little bit more worn. And then in no time at all, well, we basically have the road wheels, the running gear, everything's ready to go, and we've got the lower hole completed. And this leads us to the upper hole, and that's where a lot of the detailing is going to take place. If you are enjoying this episode and enjoy this channel, I do encourage you to hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you very much. Here we go. So to pull out the box of Voyager and let's put those instructions on the counter here. Let's see what we've got. We've got our upper hull from the kit. We'll lay that across. And I think the first thing we'll do is we'll tackle those fenders because <laughs> let's take the biggest, the most obvious part and, and work on those first, right? If you followed any of my photo etch work in the past, you'll know that I'm a big fan of soldering. So let's take a little bit of time and do some soldering here. My approach is really very, very simple. My tools are very, very basic. I think it's something that's well within reach for many modelers. So what I do is the, the little tub there, that's flux. I just take a brush and I put a little flux onto the surface. And then I've cut off just tiny little chips of the solder. And I place that onto the surface. And then with the soldering iron, I just touch the surface and we melt, melt it right across. The flux facilitates the melting of the solder. Doing one side like this or one part that goes onto another part, well, that's called tinning. And so basically you're prepping one piece so the solder is on now that little strip. And now I've put a little flux on the area where I'd like this little piece, this little part just to sit on that, on that fender there. Once I have that in location, now again, there's already solder in place because we did that tinning before. Just hold that down there, get that into exactly the right position. Now I can just touch the top of that part with the soldering iron. And once that heats up, it activates that solder and the two parts are joined together. As I mentioned, it's a very simple process and I think that's well within reach for most modelers. It just takes a little bit of practice and a little bit of patience. And then just a little cleanup, a little paper towel just to remove some of that excess flux. And then I use that fiberglass pin and just kind of polish back or burnish back any of the solder that might have squeezed out from below that part. This one happened to be very clean to start off with, so not a lot of work to do there. And you can see we're all nice and shiny and nice and clean, and that part is not going anywhere. Well, that was so much fun. Let's try it one more time because <laughs> here we go. So a little flux onto the surface. Add those little chips right there. There's one there. Grab another one. Those are the chips of solder. Now I've got my soldering iron. It's already hot. Just touch the surface and melt that solder across. Nice and easy. Something satisfying about this. And then I can just continue to work my way across this part here. And yeah, there's a little bit of heat on my fingers, but it's nothing too unbearable. It's just very brief. Just give it a nice touch. And there we go. Nice. 
So here we are. Without too much stress and strain, we've got our fenders, our front fenders. Let's lay those out there. Nice. And I've also worked on the rear fenders, and those were soldered in just the exact same manner. Good. Now it's looking good. And this is starts the kind of the, I guess, the, the most difficult part about using photo etch, especially when you're replacing fenders. I spend quite a bit of time doing some test fitting right now over the top of the existing fenders because I want to make sure that, one, these are the right shape and size, and I want to make sure that I have kind of a plan in my head of how I'm going to attach them to the, the plastic parts once I cut off these fenders. Once I feel comfortable, because at this point there's no turning back, then I can just use clippers, snippers, and the knife and just remove the existing plastic. It's always better just to kind of take this a little bit slow, get to just take little parts at a time. You don't have to take off the entire fender in one fell swoop. And just pull that off. Good. Little test fit here. Let's see. That's going to slide in there something like that. You can see there's going to be a little work there need to be done. Let's take care of this front fender. Score along the, the hull and the fender line right there on the side. Just a couple of quick scores with the blade there. Just and again, you're not trying to cut through in one one stroke. It's number of strokes. And I'll twist it a little bit here, see if I can get it to break off, and it's still hanging on. So just a little bit of patience. You don't want to break the plastic. You want the plastic to you know come off, if that makes sense. <laughs> and there we go. Now it's starting. I can just pull that off. There. There we go. I hope you notice that I'm working in sections here. I'm not taking the entire fender off in one big chunk. So you can see I'm just kind of working on the front parts of the fender right now. And I'll come back and keep removing other areas of the fenders as I work my way back. For those of you who enjoy this channel would like to support it, I do have a Patreon page. The link for that is below. In return, well, we have a Discord server where we have some nice chats. I show early viewing of these videos, special projects, videos, early viewing photographs, in-progress photographs. So if you like a little bit more content on the Propaganda channel, please check out the Patreon page. Link is in the description below. Now I'm ready to install the fender. So the first thing I want to do is give, a, give the contact points of the photo edge, the brass, a little bit more tooth. So I've got a little bit of sandpaper. I think this is 220 grit sandpaper just to give it a little bit of something for this glue to hold on to. Just a little bit of super glue here. These actually fit fairly well onto the existing hole so I don't have to put any shims in there. And it's going to rock that into place, slide that in there. And then <laughs> once I get it there, we're just going to hold it here for a few seconds and make sure everything locks into place. Well, returning to our marathon analogy here, if we've done our stretching, we've had our first uh, few miles here, now we're in our stride. So the next part here is actually pretty, pretty basic modeling. We need to remove all the surface details that will be replaced with the little photo etch details. And for that, this little chisel, it's one of those great tools. If you do this type of work, I certainly suggest that. And once those are removed, the surface details are removed, just a little bit of light sanding just to polish it all back so the plastic looks nice. But that's not to say that we're all complete with our soldering. We have some more pieces that we need to do. These are some of the stowage lockers that are on the back of the tank. Again, just a little bit of flux in those corners and then put a little chip of that solder in there. Just a little bit of heat. And then that join is nice and secure and you just keep bending your way across. There's no risk, once you do this type of soldering, there's no risk of this falling apart or, or popping open later on. Same with the brackets. These are the little holding brackets underneath those boxes. Just a couple chips of solder over the flux, and there we are, we're good to go. And I got a couple of those, and if I did this right, this will all fit into place. Uh, there we go. Yep, that works. Cool. Well, speaking of the stowage and the stowage lockers, let's make a few blankets to add here. So just epoxy sculpt this time over some wax paper and baby powder. So once again, my workbench smells baby fresh. Let's roll that out just as thin as I possibly can. I'll cut it to shape and then we can make a few blankets and bed rolls to add to the stowage on the rear of the vehicle. Once I have that rolled out, just add those in there. Just kind of plop them into place. I'm using value gear stowage. So the resin pieces you see there, they're all value gear, the boxes and some of these other tarps. The tie down straps, those are just thin strips of Tamiya tape, just cut real nice and thin. And I've got some photo etch buckles that I use, just kind of thread those through and make everything look as authentic as I possibly can, I guess. So here we go, just add a little bit of a new blanket here, just kind of make sure everything sets into place and has a good feeling of weight. Kind of tap that down there. 
I'm using a moist brush, so a little bit of water on that brush to make sure everything gets nice and sticky. And then I'll just press those in there. And now this is nicely, looks nice and natural, I think. Nice. And with that, we've pretty much hit the finish line of our marathon. The construction is complete. And yeah, this is a, I like, I love this stage when you can kind of see it in all its rawness and the shininess of the photo etch. We can see all the different components with that nice value gear resin on the back, a little bit of the epoxy sculpt and those blankets. And of course, like I said, the shiny bling of the photo etch. So you may be wondering what's coming up. Well, of course we need to paint this vehicle, which leads to the next question. How are we going to paint this vehicle or and what theme? And I think we're going to put this vehicle, well, I know we're going to put this vehicle in the Pacific. So this will be a Marine Corps Stewart. So we'll get her painted up in appropriate manner. Uh, we've got a couple of figures, a couple of three, four figures that we'll be painting. And of course, we'll be adding a small scene to this. In the meantime, thank you for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed this. If you do enjoy this channel, once again, I just encourage you to hit that like and subscribe button. And if you'd like to support this channel even further, I do have a Patreon page. And again, the description is in the link below. We'll talk to you soon, everybody. Happy modeling.